In this video, we're going to create a new PHP page called orders.php. This PHP page will display the order ID, the order date, the description, the price, the quantity, and the subtotal and the total for all orders that were placed by the customer contemporary casuals. So what I'm going to do is come to our file directory. I will go ahead and click this icon to create a new file. We will call it orders.php. I will now edit this file. And as you can see here, we have our editor over here on the left and the preview pane on the right. What I'm going to do is begin the page. So to do this, I will start by declaring that this is going to be an HTML document. And I do that by saying exclamation point doc type HTML inside of a tag. And then we will start our HTML. And inside of this HTML, we will have a head and we will have a body. Inside the head, I'm going to link to our main.css file by using the href syntax. And we know that this is a style sheet. Now, all the content that I want to display on this page, I'm going to have inside of a div with a class of container. And inside of this div, I'm going to have an h3. This h3 is going to basically give the words of what I want the user to see. So for example, we'll just say a list of all orders placed by contemporary casuals. And then I will have another div. And inside of this div, I'm going to place all the rows from my table. So I'll put, I'll start my PHP code and I will echo content. As you can see here, we have error messages because we haven't declared content previously. So we're going to start our PHP code up above and I will declare a variable called content and this will equal nothing. Make sure that you put all your PHP code at the top of the document with the exception of where you're going to insert certain pieces like the content right here is going at this specific point of the HTML document. If you don't do this, you could run into multiple errors. So what I'm now going to do is generate the query. But rather than generate the query inside of the PHP, I'm going to go to the home page, the lecture schema, and start building this query. So from the slide, we saw the specific columns that we want to select. So we're going to select order ID, order date, description, price, quantity, and then we wanted subtotal, which is actually a combination of price and quantity. So we'll do price times quantity and we'll give this an alias of subtotal. So what we now need to do is look at our ERD. And inside our ERD, we want to look for each one of these attributes. So we have order ID, which is right here inside of the order table. We have order date, which is also in the order table. We have description, which is in our product table. And we have price, which is also in our product table. We have quantity, which is in our order line table. And that covers all the ones in the select statement, but we also want to know for a specific customer. So we need the name of the customer, which in this case is contemporary casuals. So for this illustration, we need customer, order, order line, and product. So we'll join all four of those tables together. So I'm going to say from, and we'll start with customer, and I'll give it an alias of C. And I will join customer to order. But in order to do this, I need to put order in tick marks because it is a reserved keyword. I'll give this an alias of O, and I'll say on, where C.CustomerID equals O.CustomerID. Then I will enter join order to order line, and I'll give this an alias of OL. I'll join that on O.orderID, because that's what's common between order line and order, equals OL.orderID. And then finally, I will join order line to product, P on P dot product ID equals OL dot product ID. So essentially I've joined all four of my tables together. The final piece I need is to show for the customer contemporary casual. So I'm going to just add a where statement and say where name equals contemporary casuals. Additionally, we want to order this by order ID. So I'll say order by order ID. Now this is going to fail because the order ID comes from multiple tables. It comes from the order table and from the order line table. So I'm going to just say that this is O.orderID. And the same goes for up above in our select statement. We need to say this is O.orderID. So I go ahead and run this and we should see the results that match similarly to what we would expect. 
the reason why I suggest you do this first is that if this query fails here, it's not going to work in your PHP page. I do have error message checking on the PHP side that will return errors that are descriptive to help you to know what's going on. But again, this is a lot easier. The user interface is more friendly as you work with building your queries. So what I'm going to do is come over to the PHP page. I'm going to create a new variable. We'll call this one query. And inside of this query variable, I'm going to paste that query. Okay, so nothing is happening right now. It's just a text string. It hasn't been executed. Um, so we now need to have this execute against the database. So one thing that I need to do is require the connection to the database. So I'm going to do require once. And in this case, we are requiring the file that we created in our previous lecture video. So I'm going to use db.php. So now the connection has been created against our database. And so we want to execute this against the database. So what I'm going to do now is create a statement variable, set this equal to the connection, which is going to prepare our query. OK, so we have a connection variable that has prepared this query. So now we need to actually go ahead and execute it. So we'll do statement dash greater than execute. OK, so the query has successfully been executed. We are not doing anything with this query, and that's why nothing is being displayed. So let's go ahead and start displaying information. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to build my table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace our existing content variable. And in this case, I will start building the table. So we have an open table tag, a closing table tag. And inside of this table, we have various things. We have a table row, and we're going to close that table row and we have several headers. So the headers are going to correspond with each one of these fields in our select statement. So I'm going to have a table header th with order ID. Now this is just what's going to be displayed to the user so we don't need to have like o.orderid. Notice I capitalized this so it looks nice over here. And I will just go ahead and copy this six times because that's how many columns we have order id date description price quantity and the subtotal i will just go ahead and change this text here so we'll change this to order date we'll change this to description we'll change this to price we'll change this one to quantity and we'll change this to subtotal so as you can see here we now have all six of our columns represented now we need to put the data inside of here so what I'm going to eventually do is put the content from all of the rows that we will eventually be creating right here. So I'm going to just store this. So right now, content is blank. And so nothing is being placed here, as you can see, reflected over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a loop that's going to loop through each one of our records in our query. And then it will add it to this content variable. So I'm going to do for each. And I'm going to start with the statement as row. So every record that's returned from a result is going to be generated and created as a row. Since I'm going to be creating a row for each one of these, I'm just going to copy this table row information again. And I will go ahead and paste it here. I'm just going to throw errors until I actually add it to the content variable. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add to the content variable with this dot equals. So we have nothing here. We're going to add each of these rows, and then I'm going to store these rows inside of where this content variable goes. So we need to put these table rows in quotes, as you can see there. OK, so as you see over here on the right, we now have three more rows that have been added because there were three rows generated from this query. What I did for each row, since this looped through three times, is I created three more table headers, which is not what I want to do. So what we're going to do is change this to actually include the content from the actual query. Uh, a, a quick keyboard shortcut to replace things, because I don't want these to be table headers, I want them to be table cells, is if I do Control H, it will say replace all. So I'm going to just say look for TH, and then hit Enter, and I'm going to replace those with TD. I will go ahead and copy this and then undo because it, it, notice how it replaced these. I will undo and then just paste it over it. So now I have just table cells up here and table data. So that's the difference between the bolding and unbolded over here. All right, so to get the order ID, what I need to do is put in curly brackets dollar sign row 
and what uh, column that I'm specifically looking for. Now this column name must match exactly the capitalization that I have up here. So if you want, you can copy and paste it so that you do not make any mistakes. As you can see here, the order ID immediately begins to fill in. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this code for each cell and we will have the order ID repeated over and over again. All right, but I don't want order ID for all of these. So this second one, I'm going to do order date. And then this third one is going to be description. This fourth one is going to be price. And you can see on the right that it starts to fill in. This fifth one is going to be quantity. And then finally, we have subtotal. So if I were to preview this or open this file, we would see that we have a kind of similar to what our slide is representing. There are a few differences, uh, such as the dollar signs are missing and we haven't created the total row. So let's go ahead and create that total row. So in order to create the total row, it is going to be a summation of all of our subtotals. So what I'm going to do is create a total variable outside of the for each loop and I'm going to start it equal to zero. And then inside the for each loop, I'm going to take the total. I'm going to then say the total is now equal to the existing total plus our subtotal. So I'm going to just copy this row of subtotal, paste it there. And so what this is doing is it's going to take the existing total, which is zero, and then it's going to grab the subtotal of the first row, which is 400 and it's going to add it to the total and that's going to be our new total so 400 then it's going to go through and say okay now we have a total of 400 add 175 to it and then that will now be our new total so it'll do that for each row keep adding to it uh, so that we can get our total now a shortcut rather than saying total plus is just to put a plus equals and that does the same thing that we just described so now we have our total where do we put our total well, we are going to create a new row, and this row is actually going to go after our content. So I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to get rid of all these cells except for two. Because as you can see here, we have a total cell that takes up five columns, and then we have a subtotal column that takes up one. So let's go ahead and make that work. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just name this one total, and then I'm going to name this one the actual total of the value that we computed above. So I'll use dollar sign total here. And as you can see here, 2385 is exactly what we were looking for. So the next thing that I'm going to do is say, hey, let's line this total up with the actual subtotals. So I'm going to count how many columns come between that. One, two, three, four, five. So in this case, I'm going to add an attribute to our table header cell, and we will give this a value of five. So essentially what this says is take this column and have it span five columns, which it has done here, and now the total is lined up. This is all we need to do to be able to accomplish the, this particular problem. However, in the notes pane, there is some formatting. So for example, we add a dollar sign before the total. So all we need to do is put a slash dollar sign before the total. This will mean interpret this as a dollar sign rather than computing the variable. I could then come up here and say, hey, I want to have a dollar value for subtotal and price as well. And so now you can see each of these have dollar signs represented there. If you wanted to do some kind of formatting with each of these, you can use a term called number format. So in order to do number format, I actually need to append this row price instead of using it in curly brackets. So in order to do number format, I go number format, put parentheses around this, and how many decimal places is this going to go to? It's going to go to two places. So as you can see here, we have price to two decimal places. Uh, since I am breaking this out instead of it being in quotes, if it is now outside of the quotes, this is PHP, I don't need this slash in front of the dollar sign. So let me recap what just happened. We added a dollar sign before our text. I then ended my uh, quoted string. I continue with my PHP by saying add to whatever is here 
that's what this period is saying, add to whatever's here a number format of this price of two. So it's gonna take the price column and it's going to get two decimal places and format it like a number. And then I continued with my PHP, started the quoted string again, and that's how that worked. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing. I'll just copy this and we'll paste it over our subtotal and change the price to subtotal again. Okay, so as you can see here, the num number format actually adds the commas as well. So finally, we're gonna do the same thing with our total. I'll just paste it here, and this is now, instead of row price, it's just gonna be our total variable. And then, what we need to do is we need to close our connection. If you look at the notes pane of the slide, you will notice that there are subtle differences between what I did here and what I did there. Both of them are acceptable ways to accomplish this problem.